This is a very abbreviated summary of the Civil War, focusing on uh, certain important things and leaving out others. Uh, this is a scene of Richmond after it fell in April of 1865. Um, what I'd like to do now is look at uh, the major battles of some of them of the Civil War. Uh, the uh, the first uh, major battle uh, was up here. It says First Manassas. That would be the same as the first battle of Bull Run. That's only 20 or 25 miles from Washington. Um, and it was uh, a major shock for the Union because uh, they were beaten badly there. Um, early in the war, um, Admiral David Farragut captured New Orleans for the Union. And the Union, uh, early on, uh, took control of this lower part of the Mississippi River. Uh, Grant uh, won battles in Kentucky and Tennessee and um, won control of much of the Mississippi River, but could not win Vicksburg at first. So this uh, stretch of the river from Port, H Hort Port Hudson to Vicksburg, Vicksburg was very important. Uh, if the Union could uh, gain control of it, then the South would be cut in two. Uh, they couldn't uh, travel or transport uh, supplies back and forth between the western part and the eastern part. Uh, so the Battle of Vicksburg uh, becomes very important. Uh, that was, uh, that Vicksburg uh, surrendered on July 4th, 4th of July, 1863. Um, another uh, enormously important battle. Well, there were two others I want to mention. One was the Battle of um, Antietam, uh, which was a Union victory and gave um, the Union uh, enough uh, credibility, enough believability in the North so that Lincoln could uh, issue his Emancipation Proclamation. Uh, the other is the Battle of Gettysburg, probably the single most decisive, most important battle of the war and that is, was fought in southern uh, Pennsylvania. Um, before we look at um, the turning point of the war in 1863, uh, let's talk about the issue of slavery. Uh, at first, when uh, slaves would escape to Union lines, there was no federal policy. The decision was left up to individual commanders. Uh, the, and, and their decisions varied uh, a great deal. Uh, General Benjamin Butler, for example, uh, believed that escaped slaves were what he called contraband of war. Those were thing, uh, things that were confiscated in war because they were used uh, for illegal purposes. Uh, in this case, he said slaves had been used to help build Confederate defenses and therefore uh, they should be freed. Uh, when uh, they made it to Union lines. Other commanders took a very different view. Uh, some Union commanders even wanted to return fugitive slaves to the South because they argued that the, this was not a war against slavery. It was simply a war to preserve the Union. Uh, and the Fugitive Slave Act of 1850 was still in effect. So you have a great deal of variation there. Uh, in uh, August of 1861, uh, Congress began to uh, resolve that. Um, they, by passing the Confiscation Act, they said that any escaped slaves who had been used by their owners to aid the rebellion of the South would be free forever. Uh, but in order to achieve this, they established camps, work camps, and former slaves were hired out to loyal planters, those loyal to the Union, or and they were paid, uh, or they were put to work by the Union Army. But they weren't really free. They weren't free to just leave and go wherever they want and do whatever they want. And the conditions in these camps were often terrible. Uh, in some cases, as many as 25% of the residents of those camps died due to uh, poor sanitation, disease, etc. cetera. Uh, so this was hardly an acceptable uh, solution. Um, this is a photograph of escaped slaves fording uh, the Rappahannock River, uh, making it to Union lines. 
Now, the uh, the real news here in the middle of the war was the Emancipation Proclamation, but we need to talk about the steps uh, that led to it. They're uh, complicated. In July of 1862, Lincoln told his cabinet that he had decided on emancipation. Uh, but he didn't announce it publicly. Uh, he was criticized by a newspaper editor, Horace Greeley, the following month for not enforcing the Confiscation Acts well enough. Uh, so he wrote a famous letter uh, of response to Greeley. Uh, and in that letter, he said that his goal is simply to save the Union. He, he would save it if it meant freeing some slaves, all slaves, or no slaves. Uh, and yet he wrote this letter at a time when he had already decided to free uh, at least some of the slaves. Uh, now, why the difference between July and August? Uh, Lincoln had to worry about uh, keeping the support of the border states. Remember that there were uh, four slave states that remained in the Union, and he uh, could not afford to lose them. There were also a tremendous number of racists in the North who were willing to fight to save the Union, but were not willing to fight to end slavery. So Lincoln is in a difficult, awkward position. He would prefer to free the slaves, but he's afraid that the consequences of that would be disastrous for the Union. Uh, the war was going badly for the North in 1862, and uh, the, the border states in the lower north, like southern Illinois, southern Indiana, Ohio, et cetera, uh, were very uh, dissatisfied with the war, and their commitment to uh, support it was very much in question. Uh, Lincoln also feared that there would be a Democratic victory in the midterm elections or congressional elections of November 1862, and this could have been uh, terribly uh, devastating to uh, the, the cause of the Union. So he decided that he really needed to wait for a northern victory so people were feeling better about the war effort before he announced uh, his plans to emancipate the slaves. That victory came at the Battle of Antietam, September 17, 1862. Now, um, Republicans were strong supporters of the war Democrats were divided into two groups, the War Democrats and the Peace Democrats. The Peace Democrats wanted to negotiate a settlement with the South, uh, and they didn't want to continue fighting the war at all. The War Democrats supported the war, but uh, they were willing to make concessions, and it was very unclear uh, how long they would support it and what kind of a deal they might be willing to make uh, with the South. And remember this. If there is a tie, the South wins. Uh, be, because all they wanted was to break away from the Union. Uh, and if they're allowed to do that, uh, they win the war and they retain slavery. Uh, Lincoln worried that if the Congress were controlled by Democrats, uh, that they might somehow, at some point, negotiate an end to the war. And the result then would have been a confederacy, a separate nation uh, that protected slavery. So what does Lincoln do? Well, he presents emancipation as a military necessity. I'm doing this not because uh, I'm trying to uh, fight a war to free the slaves. Um, I'm freeing the slaves because the South uh, is using them uh, to support its military efforts. So it's necessary for me uh, to take away uh, the, the, this tool, in a sense, of uh, the, the military effort of the South. Uh, so what he did was to issue a preliminary emancipation proclamation directed at the South on September 23, 1862. Uh, the preliminary proclamation is before the real thing. He said, if you stop the rebellion, you can keep your slaves. But if you continue it, your slaves will be freed on the 1st of January, 1863. And he did this to convince uh, the lower north especially uh, that he was only uh, emancipating slaves 
uh, to preserve the Union. The Emancipation Proclamation itself is a very uh, straightforward, kind of a boring document. It's, it has none of the eloquence that so many of Lincoln's writings uh, had. Uh, but that was uh, deliberate. Uh, he wanted it to look just like a military order uh, to, to fit his overall strategy. Uh, so, uh, since the South ignored uh, Lincoln's ultimatum, his threat, uh, he issued the uh, Emancipation Proclamation on New Year's Day, 1863. He freed the slaves in every area controlled by the Confederacy. So, in effect, he, he freed them in all the areas where he didn't have the ability to free them. And some people were very cynical about that. On paper, it freed over 75% of all, all slaves. In reality, it didn't free any of them at first. Uh, but it would be a huge mistake to consider this to be a meaningless document. It was highly meaningful uh, for reasons that we'll, we will see in uh, a few minutes. Uh, slaves would not be freed in areas under Union control because this would undercut his argument that uh, he was fighting the war to preserve the Union and that it was necessary to free those slaves who were helping the rebellion. So he couldn't free them in areas uh, like Kentucky, for example, which was loyal to the Union, uh, and still uh, maintain that argument. Um, now, he also had constitutional problems. Uh, the law of the land was still the Dred Scott decision that said uh, slave property was legal. And Roger Taney, the uh, principal author of that decision, was still the Chief Justice of the United States. Uh, so Lincoln is doing the best he can under difficult circumstances. Now, what difference did it make? Well, first of all, African Americans had greater motivation to fight in the war because when they fought, uh, they would be freeing uh, slaves in the process. Uh, slaves themselves had a greater motivation to rebel or to escape to Union lines because they knew that if they could get free uh, the, or get to Union lines, they would be free forever. Uh, it also meant that every time the North gained a mile of territory, any slaves on that mile would be freed. So although it didn't free slaves right away, Gradually, it resulted in the freedom of a great number of slaves as the Union gained more territory. Now, African Americans understood this uh, better than whites did. They knew that even if they lived in a, uh, a Union state like Kentucky, uh, that slavery's days were numbered, that uh, the beginning of the end had arrived for the whole system of slavery. Uh, the proclamation also helped to prevent British uh, intervention on the side of the South, which was a whole other concern that Lincoln had. Uh, the Union, uh, it should be Navy here, was blockading shipments of cotton to Britain. Um, and uh, some British said, well, we should support the South because we depend on that cotton exports, those cotton exports from the United States, for our textile industry, which was extremely important during the British Industrial Revolution. Uh, but after the Emancipation Proclamation was issued, uh, anti-slavery forces within Britain, abolitionists there, were strengthened because now this was a war that would result in the freeing of slaves. And if they supported the South, uh, if Britain supported the South, then Britain would also be supporting the institution of slavery. Uh, on New Year's Day, 1863, uh, the proclamation was announced, and these are African American soldiers uh, who were hearing this announcement on that day. Now, uh, the use of African Americans in the Union Army began in 1862, and eventually, by the end of the war, uh, the, they represented 10% of the Union Army, about 180,000 troops. Uh, until 1864, though, they were not given equal pay with white uh, troops. Uh, and the response uh, was 
well, if you can't pay us equally, then don't pay us at all. Uh, and finally, uh, in 1864, Congress agreed uh, that black soldiers and white soldiers should receive the same pay. Uh, some white soldiers uh, were glad that uh, these African Americans were in the army because uh, the, the white soldiers' attitude was they were benefiting from the war and they it's only right that they helped to, to fight it. Other white soldiers uh, resorted to, to racism and simply believed that these black soldiers were uh, not as capable, that would not be reliable soldiers, etc. Uh, they were proven to be very wrong about that fact. Uh, these uh, troops were segregated. They, they served in segregated units, and that was true in the U.S. military all the way until 1948 after World War II. Uh, but the uh, presence of African American soldiers in the war uh, had a negative effect on slavery. It inspired uh, slaves to rebel or leave, run away. Uh, and, uh, and ideally to uh, join the war effort themselves. Uh, it also really discouraged the British from uh, joining the war on the side of the South. Um, this is a recruitment poster for the first uh, African-American regiment, uh, the 54th Massachusetts. Uh, this is the regiment that was uh, dramatized in the film Glory. Frederick Douglass was a strong supporter uh, of African American troops, uh, and his two sons uh, served proudly in the Union Army with uh, his full support. Now, the turning point, as I've said, uh, was 1863, the middle of the year. Uh, in the Battle of Gettysburg, uh, the Southern strategy was to invade the North, led by Robert E. Lee, uh, and if they could have won that battle, uh, they could have perhaps taken Philadelphia or Washington. And then, if they brought the, the, the pain of the war home to the North, uh, they thought that maybe the North would give up and negotiate a settlement which would allow the Confederacy to exist as an independent nation with slavery protected. There were many uh, key moments in the Battle of Gettysburg. I want to focus on two of them, Little Round Top and uh, Pickett's Charge. Um, <clears throat> on day two, the left-hand map is day two of this uh, three-day battle. Little Round Top is right here. Uh, the South, it was it was not too well defended by the North, uh, but those defenders who were there were absolutely heroic and played a very important role. If the South had broken through here, they could have outflanked the North, and it, and it would have been a whole different battle. Uh, the other, the, the, the most dramatic moment of the Battle of Gettysburg is, is right here on the third day, when Robert E. Lee ordered uh, a charge. Uh, going uphill over a large expanse of open land uh, to try to overrun the Union lines. It failed miserably. Uh, Pickett's Charge, as it's called, uh, uh, was a disaster. Uh, huge numbers of troops uh, were simply mowed down. Uh, and after that, uh, Lee's, Lee's army had to withdraw, had to retreat, uh, and never again would they invade the North. The best they could do after that was to fight a defensive war. Um, now, let me just say a little bit about the uh, Battle of Vicksburg. Um, the, uh, the city of Vicksburg surrendered on July 4th after being under siege uh, for uh, a long period of time. They were down to eating you know, rats and sawdust and things. They were simply starved out. Uh, the effect of the Union victory, as I said, was to give the Union control of the entire Mississippi River uh, and uh, split the South in two. Now, in 1864 and 65, uh, the fighting uh, focused more in Virginia than anywhere else. 
uh, Ulysses Grant was given command uh, of the main Union Army, the uh, Army of the Potomac. Uh, he moved from the west uh, to the east to Virginia. He fought a war of attrition. In other words, if he, he didn't care if he, or he cared, but he, he, he was willing to lose troops as long as uh, the South uh, was losing them uh, at a rate that they could not afford. Uh, the, uh, Grant had more to lose than Lee did. Uh, and uh, eventually the South would be worn down until they could no longer fight. That was his strategy. Um, at the same time, General Sherman, William Tecumseh Sherman, uh, was uh, moving across the South in what became the famous uh, March to the Sea, which was extremely devastating to the South. Uh, the South had one more hope, and that is that somehow uh, Lincoln would be defeated in the election of 1864. That that should say 1864, obviously, not 19. Um, and uh, their hope in doing this was that the old general, George McClellan, uh, could somehow beat Lincoln, take advantage of the unhappiness in the North over the progress of the war. Uh, the Republicans uh, even challenged Lincoln from within the party with John C. Fremont, and the Democrats challenged from uh, in the person of George McClellan. Uh, but when uh, the North won the Battle of Atlanta on September 1st, uh, 1864, Lincoln's reelection was assured. Uh, there was a problem, though. Because he was afraid of losing the election and because he wanted to keep the support of those border states, he chose as his running mate, Andrew Johnson. Andrew Johnson was from Tennessee of all places, a state that had seceded, but Johnson himself was loyal to the Union. He was from Eastern Tennessee where there weren't many slaves. And uh, it, it was a, a lot like uh, West Virginia in the, in the kinds of uh, population that uh, were living there. Now Johnson was loyal to the Union However, after Lincoln was assassinated and he became president, it became all too obvious that he was a, an enormous racist. And this uh, exacted a terrible price uh, on the process of reconstruction. Okay. Uh, it came down to uh, Ulysses Grant against Robert E. Lee. They fought in a series of battles that you read about in those excerpts from uh, April 1865, from the book called April 1865. Uh, the, uh, Grant was successfully fighting his war of attrition. Uh, Lee often uh, maneuvered brilliantly, uh, but was simply outnumbered. Uh, this Confederate capital of Richmond fell uh, on April 2nd. Shortly thereafter, uh, Lincoln himself went to Richmond and uh, greeted many of the former slaves there uh, and actually went and sat in Jefferson Davis's chair at the Confederate White House. He wanted to see uh, the city that uh, he had conquered. Uh, a week later, uh, Lee surrendered to Grant at Appomattox Courthouse in Virginia. Uh, you uh, will see in the film Lincoln uh, that Lincoln worked very hard to pass the 13th Amendment. That is what really ended slavery, uh, not fully ended it, not the Emancipation Proclamation. Uh, it passed Congress during the war and was ratified later that year. Uh, Lincoln, as we know, was assassinated um, just days after the surrender of Lee. Uh, and uh, that made Andrew Johnson the president. Uh, he was assassinated at Ford's Theater uh, by uh, an actor who supported the South, John Wilkes Booth. Uh, 